Welcome to The Deciding Point, our Crack Rackets weekly roundup of the biggest storylines happening from throughout the tennis world. As you can imagine, on this week's show, I'm going to recap the year's second Grand Slam, the 2021 French Open, delivering us the goods as tennis fans over the past two weeks in Paris. In fact, there was so much fantastic action for me to discuss. We're going to make today's show a two-parter. On this edition, I'm going to recap the men's singles draw, name a combination of five winners and losers. I have from the event. I'm going to do the same thing for the women's singles draw in a uh, subsequent show that all of you listeners can both hear on our Great Shot podcast feed, find on our YouTube channel as well. But again, those are the topics for this week's deciding point on this show. I'm going to recap the men's singles draw. On the other show, I'm going to talk women's singles. With that in mind, Westoff, roll those credits. Let's start today's show. Now, I have to discuss the performance of our men's singles champion, Novak Djokovic. Now, a 19-time slam champion comes back from two sets to love down to earn his second major title in Paris, five-set victory over Stefano Tsitsipas on Sunday. And for Novak Djokovic, what was so impressive is the gear he was able to find physically in sets three, four, and five in that final, particularly given the mountain he climbed in the semifinal. He becomes the only player in ATP Tour history to have defeated Rafael Nadal twice at Roland Garros, and there's no denying the level of tennis he played in that semifinal. That's a peak Novak Djokovic performance, particularly physically his ability to track down balls in the outer thirds of the court, his ability to turn defense in the off- into offense, his ability to be so aggressive with his footwork, find inside-out forehands, play his forehand to the lefty Nadal's forehand in the ad court. It was a vintage Novak Djokovic performance, and it was clear that performance took a lot out of him heading into Sunday's final. He mentioned it in his post-match press conference. He didn't practice on Saturday. A, because he's Novak freaking Djokovic. He knows what it's going to take in a major final. But B, because physically he was drained, and he was the night match as well. And we'll talk about the French Tennis Federation, their scheduling woes later on in this show. But for Novak Djokovic... For him to find the gear he did in sets 3, 4, and 5, there was no doubt, particularly when he broke early in set 5 for that 3-1 lead, that he was going to come through in the end and win his 19th major, and that's what he does. And, of course, now there are a lot of different things in play for Novak, who's 50-8 and eight since the tour resumed in August. And you think, well, okay, one of those eight losses is his loss to Carreno Busta at the U.S. Open, where, of course, he struck a line judge in the throat. He doesn't lose that. There's the obvious A where very likely he has 20 majors. Very likely at that point he'd have won four consecutive majors. Now it would have been Australia, U.S. Oh, I guess he would have won four out of five Australia, U.S. uh, Then Australia, French Open now here. But the big thing in play is... He's got a legitimate shot at the Golden Slam. In fact, he's probably the favorite to do so. Now, I ran a Twitter poll, which, of course, not the most reliable sample size, but a pretty good sample size. We have over 330 voters. As of right now, 44% of you think, yes, Novak Djokovic has a shot at the Golden Slam this year. 56% of you think, no, he does not. I mean, let's just play a little calculus here. You look for him heading into Wimbledon, where he's won the past two events, played 20 2018, 2019, his biggest threat has traditionally been Roger Federer, who we saw make the fourth round before withdrawing before his Berrettini match. But do we really think Roger Federer can do it for two weeks consecutively, seven matches, even on a grass court, particularly with the level physically Novak still seems to be able to hit? I don't know about that. Do we think one of the next Jenners is ready? Certainly, Tsitsipas was up two sets to love today, and he had his chances in those third sets. In that fifth set in particular, it felt like towards the end of the match when he was able to hold 4-4-5, maybe the tides would begin to turn, and when he was able to hold in that opening service game after facing break points, it was like, oh, is this a little bit of a repeat of this Zverev performance where it's going to take so much for Djokovic to come back that he'll run out of gas in the tank in the fifth set? And the answer to all of those questions were, 
or no. And, you know, again, does Medvedev's game feel particularly f- effective on a grass court? Absolutely it does. Is Tsitsipas' attacking style going to be effective? Absolutely. Berrettini on grass? That feels like a nightmare. And even a guy like a Zverev or a Rublev or a Shapovalov, all of those guys, Sinner, play big attacking games. Uh, and they're going to put Djokovic under pressure wherever they end up in the draw. Even a guy like Riley Opelka, he serves well on the right day. Who knows what can happen? But I know this, Novak Djokovic is going to be locked in physically, and again, he's one of six players who's in the top 15 in both hold percentage and break percentage. You look at his numbers right now, his hold percentage is actually 0.4% higher in the 2021 season than it is in his career. His break percentage up 3% this season at 36% for his career. He's 32.2, so actually 3.8%. He's 30, 40 years old, and we're seeing close to, if not the... It's not the peak of Novak Djokovic, because we don't see that match-in, match-out, week-in, week-out. But he can still hit that peak. He can still hit that top gear. And to do that at age 34, again, I've mentioned the fact that I think he's got a chance to win the Golden Slam this year, because he's the favorite going into Wimbledon. I actually think the U.S. Open, just given how many of these young players, a Rublev in the, there in particular, a Sinner, you even throw, again, some of the younger guys in the mix who are better hardcore players or a healthy Dominic team at that point. There are a lot more threats at that U.S. Open, in my opinion, than Wimbledon, but Wimbledon would be number 20 for him in the total Grand Slam count, and like he is the favorite to end up as your winner in, in terms of the most majors in men's tennis uh, open era singles history. I think he is the favorite as well to perhaps get to 24 before Serena. I think he is... We'll talk about the GOAT discussion a little bit later, but he is just the favorite, period. The rest of the season, a prohibitive number one in the world right now. And for him to follow up that win over Rafa, again, drop those first two sets, go into the bathroom, do whatever he did in that changeover, get a new towel or get new gear on and come out a completely new player. It worked for him. His stats got better and better as the match went on. Physically, he seemed to sink his teeth and become more disciplined as the match went on as well. And of course, a discipline locked in physically no. Novak Djokovic is still the best male player in the world. He gets the job done. Now 19-10 and 10 in Grand Slam finals. That's freaking ridiculous. 19 Grand Slam titles overall. French Open num- title number two for Novak Djokovic.